Hey what's going on guys Tanmay for Simple Snippets and welcome back to another video tutorial under network security and today we are going to be taking a look at a security threat that happens in the Diffie Hellman key exchange algorithm which is known as man in the middle attack or bucket bridge attack so in the previous video of this network security or information security playlist we discussed in detail the Diffie Hellman key exchange algorithm and why we need that algorithm and we also discussed the problem that comes when symmetry key exchange happens on the internet and that is the reason why we need that Diffie-Hellman algorithm. So today we are going to be taking a look at the threat that is how the man in the middle attack works. So before even we start off if you don't know what Diffie-Hellman key exchange algorithm is make sure you watch that previous video I'll just link that video in the description and you can also see a card on the top right corner because it is very important that you understand the Diffie-Hellman key exchange before you actually see what happens when a man in the middle attack happens on this exchange. So for that you need to understand the algorithm first. Anyways as you can see on the screen this was the mathematical theory and the diagrammatic explanation of Diffie-Hellman key exchange. So what you can do is you can pause the screen if you just want to have a quick recap you can just read out the steps and you can see the diagram. So you can see there are steps and you can read out the theory and you'll understand if you haven't seen the previous video. So moving on to the man in the middle attack. So as the name suggests Man in the middle attack means that there is a person in between which intercepts the communication that is happening between two legitimate users. So let's say Alice and Bob are the actual people who want to have a communication. Okay, so these two are legit users that is these are legitimate and genuine users who want to perform communication over the internet or some network. So they are trying to perform the diffie hellman key exchange for the first time that is they want to share same key that is KS which is symmetric key. So they want to perform that sharing of the key on the internet. However, what happens is an unauthorized user known as Tom, which you can see is a hacker over here, intercepts these keys on the internet and makes copies of those keys via this man in the middle attack. And then what happens is every time there is communication, it is happening between Alice and Tom. And then Tom sends that message to Bob. Similarly, when Bob tries to send something to Alice, it happens between Bob and Tom first. And then Tom sends back to Alice. So this is something that Alice and Bob doesn't know that their messages are being intercepted and decrypted. And this happens because Tom essentially performs man in the middle attack and gets those keys. So we'll see how that attack happens. But essentially this is the general picture of a bucket bridge attack or man in the middle attack. So this is how the generalized picture can be seen. So now let's see how the attack works. Okay. Okay. So as you can see on the screen, there is a huge diagram. And it might seem a little bit confusing but I'll explain to you what happens step by step and it will be very easy. It's just that you need to have a good understanding of how diffie hellman key exchange works and then it, this entire attack will be very clear. So starting off let's say step number one Alice and Bob agree upon two large prime numbers and here the large prime numbers are not really large but just for calculation purpose we are taking n and g as 11 and 7 respectively and these numbers are publicly known. So this was the step one in diffie hellman key exchange as well right. So Alice and Bob both know NNG and this NNG is publicly known on the internet. So even Tom, which is the middle person who's a hacker knows these numbers. Okay. So he knows these numbers. So this is step number one. Now Alice has her own private number X equals to three. So this is private and it's not known by Tom and is not known by Bob as well. Right. So Alice calculates her a value. So I'm just denoting it by subscript a. So this is Alice's a value which is given by the formula g raised to x mod n. So this is we are going by the diffie hellman key algorithm right. So Alice calculates this a and gets this value too. Okay. Similarly for Bob he has his own private random number y which is 9 and uh, this 9 is not known by Tom and is not known by Alice as well. So Bob calculates his b value which is b subscript b and he gets 8. Okay, so this is again following diffie hellman key algorithm. Now Tom doesn't know x value of Alice and doesn't know y value of Bob. So what does Tom do? So Tom is going to be acting as an intermediate person, right? So whatever communication is going to happen between Alice and Bob has to happen via Tom, right? So Tom doesn't know x and y of Alice and Bob respectively. So what he does is he assumes his own x and y values. So you can see over here, he's assuming x as 8 and y as 6. Now they need not be equal to Alice and Bob's x and y values because obviously Tom doesn't know these values, right? So he's going to just assume x and y and he's going to calculate his own a and b values. Okay. 
So he calculates a of t, which is a of tom, and b of t, which is b of tom, using the same formula g g raised to x mod n. Now, of course, he knows the Diffie-Hellman key algorithm, so he knows the formulas at least. Even if he doesn't know these private values of x and y of Alice and Bob respectively, he knows the algorithm, right? So he can calculate using the formula for himself his own values of a and b, right? So these are his own values. So he assumes x as eight and y as six. He already knows g and n because g and n are publicly available. So he calculates his own values a of t and b of t, which is nine and four. Okay. So up until now, everybody has calculated their own a value, b value, and Tom has calculated both a and b values. So why did he do that? Now what happens is when Alice tries to send her a value to Bob. Since Tom is the middleman and he's acting as the middle person, he intercepts this a value. You can see Alice actually wants to send this value to Bob. That is this a value, right? But when she is trying to send this value, Tom intercepts this and keeps it for himself. So you can see he has kept Alice's a value as two for himself. Okay, and instead of sending Alice's a value, what Tom does is he takes his own a of t value, which is nine. And sends it to Bob. Okay, you can see why these arrows, right? So A of Tom is being received by Bob. Now Bob on the other end doesn't know that this interception has happened in the middle because it's happened on the internet, right? Bob cannot physically see where Tom is, where Alice is, and Bob and Alice doesn't even know that there exists a middle person who is actually doing this interception. Okay, so Bob thinks that this A of T is actually coming from Alice. Okay, similarly. When Bob tries to send his b value b of b, which is eight, to Alice, again Tom intercepts this value b of b from Bob and sends Alice b of t, which is Tom's calculated b of t value. You can see over here four is being transferred over here. So this is Tom's value. Now again Alice doesn't know that there is a middle person Tom who is a hacker and who is intercepting these messages. So Alice thinks that this b of t is coming from Bob. Okay. So this exchange. Is where the real crux happens and is where the real attack is happening because Alice and Bob doesn't even know that the values of b of t for Alice and a of t for Bob is coming from Tom. They're thinking that they are actually sharing their own values. So now what happens is Alice calculates her k1 value using Tom's b of t, right? So using Tom's b of t value four, so she gets k1 as nine. Similarly, Bob calculates k2. Using again Tom's a of t value because Tom sent his own a of t value over here, right? And he gets k two as five. And now Tom, who has intercepted both Alice's a value and Bob's b value, calculates two keys k two and k one. And k two is going to be equal to nine, and k one is going to be equal to five. So k one, so k one which Tom calculated is going to be equal to Bob's k two, and k two that Tom calculated is going to be equal to Alice's k one. So why do you think this happened? It is because if you observe Diffie-Hellman key exchange algorithm is not happening between Alice and Bob directly, but what is happening is Diffie-Hellman key exchange is happening two times, once between Alice and Tom, and second time between Tom and Bob. So I hope you are getting this difference, right? Now Alice and Bob doesn't know that the Diffie-Hellman key exchange is happening between Tom, but Tom knows this because he has assumed x and y of his own. But he is exchanging his own a and b values with Bob and Alice, respectively, right? So basically, key exchange is happening between Alice and Tom once. So there is one key between Alice and Tom. That is this k one, which is nine, and for k two, it's nine. That is for Tom, it is k two. So don't go with the numbers. It's just key one and key two. And then there is one more Diffie-Hellman exchange happening between Bob and Tom, which is this key, which is five, because Tom performs the entire Diffie-Hellman two times. One with Alice and one with Bob, and Alice and Bob are thinking that the Diffie-Hellman key exchange has happened between Alice and Bob directly, but it is not like that. So I hope you are understanding this entire man in the middle or bucket bridge attack. So now you must be wondering, okay, but the key value of Alice is nine and key value of Bob is five, which means that it is not symmetric in nature. So how will the communication happen? So again, as I mentioned, since this is a man in the middle attack. The interception happens in between, and the communication is happening via Tom and not directly to Alice and Bob. So it's not happening directly between Alice and Bob. So what happens is when Alice is sending plain text, she is using this key nine, 
to perform encryption. So I'm saying ENC and then this is intercepted by Tom, right? So Tom uses his key K29, right? He is using K2 to decrypt this ciphertext. So after encryption, we have a CT. Then Tom uses this K2, which he already has to decrypt this and gets the plain text. He reads all the messages, all the confidential data he's reading. Let's say some passwords, let's say some bank account details. He's reading all those credentials. And what he does is he uses K1 to again encrypt this PT. Okay. And again performs encryption and then sends it to Bob. So after reading this plain text, so Tom used K2 to decrypt the cipher text, which came from Alice, right? Because K2 is nine for Tom and K1 is nine for Alice, which means that he can use this key. That is Tom can use this key K2 to decrypt this cipher text, right? So he got the message plain text. He read all the credentials and all the confidential data. And now he wants to send this plain text back to Bob. So what he does is he uses this key K1 to perform encryption, get the cipher text and send it to Bob. So since Tom's K1 is equal to five and Bob's K2 is equal to five, Bob can then decrypt this message, right? So Bob can use this K2 to perform decryption. So this is how the communication is happening. And there is a middleman known as Tom who is performing this man in the middle attack. And every time Alice now sends a message, she encrypts it with K1. It is sent to Tom first. That is Tom intercepts this message. Tom decrypts this message using his key, which is matching with Alice's key. Then he reads all the confidential data from the plain text. He then encrypts that plain text using the key, which is matching with Bob's key and then sends it to Bob so that Bob is able to decrypt it. So this is the man in the middle attack or bucket bridge attack. And I hope you have a good idea about the entire working and why exactly does Tom does these two processes. That is, it performs Diffie Elman key exchange between Alice and between Bob separately so that he gets two different keys and then he can be the middle person when the communication is happening. So that's it for this video, guys. I hope you understood the man in the middle attack or also known as bucket bridge attack. If you like this video and if you understood this concept, please share it with your friends and like this video. Let me know in the comments how this video was. If you haven't yet subscribed to this channel, guys, make sure you subscribe so that you get notified whenever I upload a new video. And for that, you can turn on the notifications as well. Thanks for watching guys. I'll see you guys in the next video tutorial. Peace.